What's up guys, Christy here with Oak Hill Millworks and coming back for you today with a little pre-CNC checklist. If you wanna take a quick minute before we get started, you can actually expand the description below and you can see I've written it out for you. So if you'd like to copy and paste it and save it as a note in your phone or even print it out for your shop, feel free to do so. All right, let's just jump right in. Number one, gonna encourage you guys to remember to double check bolt tightness before you run a job. I've actually had bolts both on the dust boot and the Z slider mount come loose during a job from all the movement. Um, and that can be a little bit nerve wracking to say the least. So simple thing, just keep your Allen wrenches nearby and double check bolt tightness before you get going. Next up, double check and make sure your dust boot isn't gonna get in the way when you home your machine when you're first turning it on. This was pretty foreign to me when I was first getting started and I was using the suck it dust boot and it actually interfered with the machine homing the router properly. It was literally bumping into the feet and it would tell me that it was homed, but it wasn't accurate. So keep that in mind when homing your machine. Okay, number three, this is a really big one. Make sure where you place your clamps or whatever hold downs you're using, they're not gonna get hit. You have to double check this. What I like to do is use a Sharpie and actually mark um, where on the workpiece that my edge is going to be. This works better when you're using Aura Mask because, you know, no harm writing on it, right? But uh, if you can't write on it, just measure, maybe put a pencil mark on it and make sure you can freehand drive your router around before you run the job and make sure neither the bit nor the actual spindle mount or router mount are gonna come into contact with your clamps because believe me, you do not want your router taking a bite out of those. Number four, if you're using a bit with a removable knife, please double check the tightness of the knife in the bit before you get going. Um, I have used a bit like this before and it has actually shattered on me mid job. I did not get injured. It all kind of the shrapnel went in the back corner of my shop, thankfully, but um, from now on, I always double check the knife tightness in that bit. This next one is a little less obvious. It has to do with the bit you're using. Let's say you already have a quarter inch bit in your chuck and that happens to be the bit you wanna start with next time you use your CNC. Depending on how much time has elapsed between the last time you use it and the next time you use it, you may want to just double check and not assume that that bit is in a good position and nice and snug in the collet anymore because during the last job, chances are sawdust may have built up in the collet and that can actually make the bit looser than it should be. So my recommendation would be to actually remove your bit, clean out that collet. What I like to do is just give it a little tap with my wrenches, sawdust will fall out and then rechuck your bit nice and snug. Gonna do a quick pause here in the middle just to say if right now something has occurred to you that I might not have mentioned so far, go ahead and comment it down below. That way I can add it to the list in the description and everyone can benefit from your suggestions. And if you have a second, you might as well just hit that little thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed too. Another good thing to double check on the router itself would be the speed dial. If you're running the Makita like I am, you know it goes through a lot of vibration during a job. So that speed dial can tend to move on you. So I know there are some 3D printed gadgets out there you can buy to kind of lock it in place and I'm overdue for doing that. But um, double check and make sure it hasn't moved before you run your job and just make sure it correlates with the RPM that's recommended for the bit you're planning to use. This next thing to double check is actually having to do with units that you design your CNC file with. So if you design an Imperial, make sure that on the monitor it's set to Imperial Otherwise, things are gonna get confusing real fast if your computer thinks it should operate in metric and you've designed an Imperial. Next up, dust collection level. Just double check and make sure your sawdust isn't nearing like the brim of your collection container because I don't know about you, but I would not want to be mid job when my dust collection starts backing up. So this is a simple one, just keep an eye on that. This next one is a big one. I need you to really make sure your material is fastened tightly to the table. There's a lot of different ways to do it. My preference is double-sided tape 
and a clamp or two. Uh, one time I chose not to use the tape and just do two clamps and I thought it was secure. I tried to move it before starting the router and it didn't move, but it still came loose during the job and I had to hit the emergency brake. So um, double check that and just be better safe than sorry if you ask me. When your material starts rotating in a way it shouldn't um, at 12, 14, 16,000 RPM, it's a little scary. So take it from me double-sided tape plus clamps, it's a good idea. Next up, clear your area. This is another easy thing to just double check before you get going with a job. I know I tend to lay things down on my table, especially along the Y rails, and I have to remind myself to do this one so that my cables um, don't get hung up where they're not supposed to. So keep your area clean. Last, but certainly not least, your protective equipment is really important. So add that to your checklist. Make sure you have safety glasses, hearing protection, and a respirator if you need it nearby and ready to put on before you run your CNC job. All right, well, if you made it this far and watched the entire video, I want you to comment hero, because you're my hero. Watching these videos to the end actually helps support my channel and my family. So thank you for doing that. Again, drop a comment if you have any other pre-CNC checklist items you would like me to add. Thank you for your support. See you on the next one.